Hello, I'm Laetitia Miral, I'm a paper magician and today I'm going to share with you a few tips and secrets on how to sculpt a beautiful animal's head. I adore sculpting animals, I adore animals in person, they are my absolute favorite characters to sculpt. I adore watching them in parks, uh, outside, I adore watching them sleeping, walking, eating, just doing what all animals do. They are really a super nice, super funny show for me and I try to improve my skills every year uh, in sculpting these uh, heads, their beautiful heads and I and usually I repeat the same animals on a regular basis not because I don't have any ideas of other characters I could do but just because I like to improve my skills my animals evolved a lot throughout the years. Uh, I started to share my work, my artwork online in 2006-2007 and uh, you can see the first characters, the very first animals I did, which are very different from what I do now, hopefully. And my techniques changed quite dramatically these past two years. I do things very differently now. On the very first animals you saw at the very beginning, I only had one sculpting session, which means I was taking care of the sculpting, then painting the head. And now for every animal you, you see, uh, on my blog, everywhere, I have at least three sculpting sessions, which means I sculpt Wortley the head, the cheek, the front head, the mouth, the nose, I let everything dry, I come back to it once it's totally dry and I sculpt a little more with more definition, then I go back to, to the head once it's totally dry and I try to add much more details, more definitions, I once more let it dry completely and I once, very last time, I finish all the beautiful details before painting it and it's much easier to work on a dry surface, on a dry head every time. If you have never sculpted an animal, I would recommend to start with something super easy to begin with. You can try a frog or you can try an owl, it's very round, it's super simple and you are sure not to make any big mistakes. Then you can try some foxes, wolves, dogs, cats because they have ears and whiskers, it's slightly more difficult to do but it's not impossible at all you just need to learn how to to put all these ears to make everything symmetrical but you can do it i'm sure then afterwards you have the horse, horses donkeys and unicorns then at the end you have all the animals with horns like wendies war deers deers ibexes they are all difficult to do. I'm going to tell you the truth because you have the horns you have to find ways to attach them to the body there are many ways you can do that but it's not the main reason you have to 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 create big eyeballs usually they have big eyeballs they don't have anything special in their head and you can very easily make them look like dogs or cows and uh, you will be disappointed if everyone around you tell you you have done a beautiful dog so just be careful and, um, and if you want to try them, really you have to find tons of pictures from every side for every animal you are going to do, from the back, from the front head, from the back, from every angle, just to be sure you don't use your imagination to fill the gaps uh, and what you are not really sure about these heads. And especially for these very difficult, challenging animals. So just be realistic about what you can do at the moment. So to start you have to know that any animal's head is very geometrical and in paper I'm only going to use and perhaps you are only going to use uh, balls, rectangles, half balls of paper to, to build the head, to build the structure of the head. And I always start with the dry creased newspaper ball or sometimes I used some craft paper, some paper bags, anything like that and I attach it to a stick, it might be an iron stick, it might be a pencil, anything uh, which will uh, prevent the head to be flattened by something, it's going to be still very round and I always use this just because it's going to dry then I'm going to, to sculpt it on something dry, it's not going to be too heavy because if it's very wet it's going to be very heavy and 
is going to be you have more uh, risk to damage it. So another secret I gave you just there is uh, use all these drying times. As I said, I, I always sculpt my heads with different sculpting sessions and I include a lot of drying times and uh, this way you are sure you are not messing up everything because depending on the size of your character, the size of the animal's head, it's going to be more or less complicated. That's what I do now all the time. All the animals you saw uh, just before, uh, they are done uh, following this technique with three, at least three sculpting times, with a lot of drawing time, just to make everything very detailed, very refined, and it's just the best way I found out. I didn't do that at the beginning. A few years ago, I didn't know it. I also would recommend to start from the middle of the head and go afterwards to the outer side of the head, just to put everything in place to be sure it's well organized and don't do a very beautiful nose, something super precise uh, at the very beginning. You don't, we really don't care that it's very beautiful at the beginning. It's going to be horrible and it's going to be more and more pretty. Um, you have to start with something very draft, very simple and more and more defined and you will let the horns, the ears at the very end, just when ev once everything is, is um, in place on the head just because you are going to damage them otherwise when you are sculpting them and you also have to remember to be bold to try something big as you saw in the pictures of the the cat i was working on um, you have to be bold even for a cat a cat is supposed to be very flat and uh, he has just a tiny nose tiny mouth but if you work this way it's going to be a little boring i found out and they are not so flat by the way so you have to remember to be bold beginners are never bold i can tell you that in my classes i always had to struggle with that because they were always doing very very tiny things and in my um, princess cat online workshop i always uh, recommend to my apprentice magicians just to be bold and to create a sort of big foundation for the mouth even for the cats so that you can afterwards cut a very very defined, very beautiful mouth, which won't be too flat and we really uh, give a lot of um, expression to the cat. It's super important and uh, remember that with paper you can fix any problem. It's super easy uh, to remove something, to add something. Any mistake is never lost. So um, just have that in mind and be bold. Post below your questions. Uh, what are your biggest struggles when you sculpt an animal's head? What animals do you find are more difficult than others? For me, it's all the animals with horns. And bears are also quite tricky to do. They look simple to do, but they're really not. And uh, so let me know. I would be really interested to know. And what are the sort of mistakes you keep doing when you sculpt an animal? Then, if you would like to learn how to shape, how to sculpt, how to paint an animal, which is not too complicated and not too challenging either, you can join my Princess Cat online workshop. I teach in this workshop how to paint, how to sculpt a beautiful cat, and I also teach all my paper techniques that I use in my artwork. So you're most welcome. You can join, uh, join me. I will have uh, the link just below. You could also see all the, the beautiful spectacular cats my apprentice magician have done. They are all super super pretty. I was so impressed to see their work. Thank you very much for watching. I remind you that you can find me on my blog, which is updated every week, on my newsletter, which is sent twice a month, and also on these channels on a quite regular basis. And I see you next week for the next Paper Secret video.